Most people think that sexual assault occurs in the evening while they're walking alone in remote locations. And often they'll have an electronic device in front of them. And while they may be paying attention to that, the other things may be going around, uh, specifically as they're walking around campus or elsewhere. The reason why sexual assault occurs is because someone is trying to impose their will upon another person. The word and the truth needs to be out as far as specific to sexual assault. I'm sorry. Statistics nationally show over 90% of sexual assaults that occur, the victim and the suspect know each other. More importantly, alcohol is a precipitating factor. Either the victim and or the suspect have been consuming alcohol. And I definitely want victims and survivors to know that if they've been drinking, that that is not a reason to not disclose it. I mean, the crime is the assault itself, not the alcohol. So I went to a graduation party. This was one of the last ones before everyone kind of peaced out and left. And. We were having a great time, there were, all my friends were there. We were playing beer pong, you know, everybody was smoking weed, it was really great. From there, everything kind of got a little fuzzy, don't really remember a whole lot of that. So I'm walking down the road, and um, I'm like, what? how did I even get here? Where am I, and um, what is going on? I ended up getting into his car, which I didn't even know was around the area. I couldn't find my cell phone, I didn't know where any of my friends were and um, really felt very vulnerable in that position. Thought that maybe if I tried to enjoy this and maybe if I really liked what was going on that everything would stop and that I'd be able to leave or I'd be able to find my friends or I'd be able to get out of that situation. Um, blacked out several times, don't have a lot of recollection of what happened that night. We have a misperception in our community that this is a women's issue. The majority of the victims and survivors of sexual violence are women but it's not a women's issue, and certainly not their issue alone. Men also are victims of the same offense as well. And we have taken several reports with males being victims of sexual assault. Have you guys ever seen a situation like at a party or something where a guy is feeding a girl drinks and they kind of go upstairs and you know she's drunk? And you're like, That's, that looks wrong. So have you ever seen that before? Have you ever stepped in and done anything about it? It's okay to step in and say something, and maybe it's as simple as distracting. It can be difficult if people are drinking without raising tempers and things like that. So maybe you just intervene and say, hey, I know him or her, why don't you let me take them home? You know, I'm friends with them, and have a group of people that you know and trust to take that person, that potential victim survivor home, and so that they're safe and secure. Now we encourage our students to be alert, to be aware, to be responsible for themselves and responsible for their community. Society does such a phenomenal job with victim blaming that he or she must have expected this to happen because they're drunk, right, because they've passed out. And that's what we have to shift, that's what we have to change, and that's not the reality. You know, and so I think being an engaged bystander and being active and being watchful of that and, and helping someone out, whether they're your friend or a stranger, right? It's our community. Individuals need to know and understand that they need to be responsible for themselves. And how do we do that? How do we be responsible for our community? And that's as equally as important as well, because we do need to care for one another. We should care about everyone and care about their safety. I think that everyone deserves a right to be here and to be immersed in a learning environment that's free of hostility, free of assault.